Kyle Lowry, we expected that he would end up in Miami. It's what we're getting, a sign and trade. Six-time All-Star is going to leave Toronto and end up in South Beach. He's 35 years old. He acknowledged it via Twitter. You know, Miami was in the finals two years ago, lost to the Lakers, but swept in the first round by Milwaukee this past year. Uh, what do you make of Lowry at 35 taking his talents to South Beach, to quote some other guy who ended up in Miami a long time ago? I, I like it, Eric. Again, it'll be interesting how this contract looks in, in year three. You said it. He's a mid-30s point guard, but shot almost 40% from the three-point line last year, was a 21-point and seven-assist guy, and his rebounding numbers are pretty impressive, too. And we saw in that run with the Raptors a few years ago when Kawhi Leonard was there, he's capable, literally, we've seen it, of being the second-best player, at least over the course of an entire season, on a championship team and a leader. And I think the Miami Heat are a top four team in the Eastern Conference. And if you're a top four team in the East, you can make a run. You've got Jimmy Butler. If Lowry holds up over the course of this upcoming season, I like it a lot for the Miami Heat. All right. Uh, Jimmy Butler looks like he's going to get a new deal, a max extension. What do you make of the fact that in South Beach, they're busting out the checkbook here? Yeah, they are. I mean, you, you absolutely said it. Pat Riley has made no secret of the fact that he desperately wants another championship post-LeBron. Talking to sources in and around that organization, even though it's been a long time for LeBron since he left Miami, there are still, Eric, hard feelings about the fact LeBron left, at least from Miami's view, how he left. And Pat Riley, who's as competitive a person as there is in basketball, the president of basketball operations, wants one more ring to show and prove. They'll tell you to everyone else, I think in some ways it's to himself, that he can still do without LeBron James. They also think they have a window. They made that NBA Finals year reference this past October in that weird Orlando COVID bubble year. So you lock him in for a lo the long haul. You've got some young guys. They really like Duncan Robinson, some other players. We just added, we talked about Kyle Lowry to that mix for the Miami Heat. Put it all together and they feel like they've got a window that extends two or three years at least. You know, Duncan Robinson started basically at a Division three school, then went to Michigan, and now he just signed the largest contract ever by a non-drafted player. Five years, $90 million. All right, Duncan Robinson. Love you. Go blue. He's been a friend of the program, a good guy, and now he got paid. Shoot the ball in your driveway, kids. It can pay off. Uh, what would you make of the fact that Duncan Robinson getting somewhere around $18 million a year? Exactly what I had, Eric. You stole the thought out of my. You're reaching into my brain. You plucked the exact same thought. Uh, parents, if you have a child who's going to be tall, make him shoot three point shots two three thousand times a night before bedtime. Because this is how valuable that particular skill is in the NBA. And again, five years ago, ten years ago, Duncan Robinson or anyone like Duncan Robinson making almost twenty million dollars a year would have been absurd. But this is the way that the world works. The cap, which the NBA just released, went up by about $4 million per team. Players get a much bigger chunk of the pie than they did 10 years ago. And that means guys like Duncan Robinson, nice player, can score, can obviously hit that three-point shot, are going to make this kind of money. You know, there was a movie, Fletch, that anybody over the age of 40 has basically seen. And Fletch has a dream, and he's a great basketball player, and it's... Nine million a year, that's true. Like it was a joke that nobody would ever make nine million dollars a year. Duncan Robinson makes twice as much as that for each of the next five years. Well done, Bill Ryder. All right, Caesar Sportsbook weighed in. Who's going to win the East? Nets. Basically, it's Nets or not Nets. That's what you got to decide first and foremost. Then you have the Bucks that are defending champs, 25%. Then you have the Sixers. Who knows they're going to do with Ben Simmons? And then next up, the Heat. And again, Bucks won it this past year, but two years ago in the bubble, it was the Heat that represented this conference. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.